In this video, we're looking at one of the slickest Willis Coupes on the planet. And the best part about this thing is that it's got family history and serious drag racing history going back to the mid 1960s. I first saw this car in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee at the Shades of the Past Hot Rod Roundup. And this thing impressed me right off the bat. And I walked around it, took a little video of it. I just liked how it looked. It had some cool colors and finishes on it. And of course had a cool stance. But when I got around to the signboard, that's when I realized I'm looking at something really special. This is the Cat Skinner. This is a historic gasser from the 1960s that ran in the Southeast by a guy named Bogan Renfro. Now, Bogan had a series of Willis gassers, and this happens to be the second of three that he built in the 1960s. And what I wanna do is tell you a little bit about each one and then really hone in on this one, which has had a huge transformation. This thing went from an old race car to an absolute showstopper. This thing has crazy details, front to back and even underneath. You will not believe the level of detail on this car. And what I wanna do is show you some of that build process and of course talk about the history of this car, but also talk about Bogan Renfro's legacy as one of the key players in the gasser wars of the Southeast. I was able to talk to Bogan on the phone. He gave me a really nice rundown of his drag racing career, which was pretty short lived, but really it all started in about 1964. He started running a 57 Ford in modified production, but very quickly got into the gasser wars because that was super hot in the mid 60s. There was guys like Gene Cromer, Bunky Bobo, lots of guys in the Southeast who were running gassers and they were running this Willis body and that's what really got him started. So in 1965, Bogan bought his first real race car. It was a Willis Coupe that he actually bought from legendary Ford racer, Phil Bonner, and he put a 427 cubic inch Ford engine in this thing. You'll see in the pictures, this car is actually a 40 model. It's got the different style grill in it. And you'll also notice that it sits up pretty high. That was a real standard stance back in the day, was get that front end up in the air, get the weight transferred to the back tires because tire technology was not what it is today. So they had to do every trick they could to get traction to get down the racetrack. So he had a big monster 427 cubic inch Ford engine in this thing. He ran this car in A gas, which was the top of the food chain for the gassers. And it was pretty competitive. He raced from 65 to 67 with this car and it held its own even though this car was a little heavier than some of its competition. So with that in mind, Bogan went out and bought a second car. Now this one was gonna be lighter. It was gonna be much more on the edge as far as the rules were concerned. It was something he could take to national events and be very competitive with. Soon after the car was finished, he actually sold it to his brother-in-law, Archie Marchman, who raced it for several years. Now he actually changed it over to a Chevrolet engine, a small block, and ran the car in sea gas. But we've got a few pictures of this car in the sea gas configuration. You'll notice it's got polished Halibrand wheels on it. It's got a beautiful candy apple paint job on it. And this was a top of the line drag car for the mid 60s. During all of this transition, Bogan decides to build a third Cat Skinner. This one would be even more advanced than the second one, even though we're talking about just months basically between building one and the other. So in 1966, Bogan is building the third car and he decides to change up the stance big time. And during this time, it was still pretty popular to have the nose up high in the air. You know, that was a conventional gasser stance. And he actually decided to put the nose down on the ground. And you'll notice that this thing has got the candy apple paint job. It's got the awesome lettering. And this one's got a set of chrome Krager SS wheels on it. But the real wow factor of this car was that it had a 427 camera in it. So this single overhead cam engine that Ford produced in very small numbers was powering this A-gas monster. Now these engines were pretty much race ready straight from the factory, but he added mechanical fuel injection. Of course, they had little tricks and things that they wanted to do to add horsepower to the combination. And this thing was brutally fast. And he actually won big at the World of Wheels in Atlanta, Georgia. He took home best of show, best in competition, and best engineering. And you know, for a race car to go in and basically clean house is kind of a big deal. If you're wondering about the Cat Skinner name, that actually goes back to Bogan's line of work. And that nickname came from people who operated Caterpillar machinery. So a Cat Skinner was a guy who could really get out there and you know, make something happen with dirt and big machinery. 
and he was one of those guys. He spent 60 years in the grading business. Bogan was out there racing every time the gate was open at all sorts of different racetracks. His location near Atlanta gave him access to tons of drag racing, including tracks like Yellow River Drag Strip, Atlanta Speed Shop Drag Strip. You had Southeastern International Dragway in Dallas, Georgia. You had Paradise Drag Strip in Calhoun. And if you stretched out further than that into the Carolinas, over into Alabama, into Tennessee, I mean, he stayed busy. Basically, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, going to different tracks all around, and he was making money. Not only was he making money off of the purse if they were having a gasser race, but he was also getting booked in for match races. So he'd match race up against Gene Cromer and Bunky Bobo and a lot of the Southeastern guys, and he was getting paid to drag race, which is basically everybody's dream. So he was telling me while we were on the phone that in 1968 that he brought home $28,000 just in his drag racing efforts, which is unbelievable. He was running a business and still made that kind of money on the side doing what he enjoyed to do. So it was pretty amazing. And you know, you start to wonder why would somebody give up on something like that if they're successful at it, they're enjoying it, and they're making money at it. Well, the bottom line was that his business was growing and he needed to focus on that. So he ended up retiring from racing in the 1970s. So by this point, the first car had already been sold off. The second car he had actually bought back from his brother-in-law and the third car had been sold off. So he still had the one car, the Cat Skinner number two, and this car sat in various places through the years and ultimately ended up in his basement. Also during this time, Bogan was raising a family. Now, he had a house full of kids, he had daughters and one son named Bo, and his son obviously took interest in the old car in the basement, the old Willis that was still hanging in there. And Bogan actually had intentions of putting this car back on the street instead of it just being strictly a drag car. And he had different ideas for how to accomplish that, but the project never really took off, never really gained a lot of momentum. But when Bo got older, he took the reins of this car and this project and he actually sent this thing to a local shop, Kent Waters Originals. Now this guy builds extremely high-end show cars and he gave this car the full treatment. This car came in the shop as sort of a mismatched bunch of things that had happened through the years at different shops and when Kent got a hold of it, the focus was there, the quality of the workmanship was there and they really made something special out of this old race car. So with the new focus on this car's future, they got rid of a few things that were gonna limit this car's potential in the show field. So they got rid of the fiberglass front end and they went out and tried to find a steel front end for a 41 Willis and that is absolutely difficult. But they were able to track down some pieces and Kent and the guys there at his shop, they went all out to make this thing really nice. As far as a metal fabrication, you're not gonna find a better fabricated body than the one that's on this car because even the parts that were in decent shape had to be massaged and really worked to make this thing as straight and as slick as it is. And what's really impressive when I was looking through the build pictures is the hood. They really had to do a lot of work to make this thing look basically factory except for the little scoop. But you'll see on some of these build pictures that they had sliced and diced this thing they had to basically build it from the scratch. And they replicated the scoop. You'll see in these pictures that they got the old scoop on the workbench and they're replicating it in metal and making all of this stuff absolutely seamless. I mean, the metal work on this thing is incredible. And you know, through all of this process, I mean, they're working with an old race car, which most of the time these cars didn't live the easiest life. But this one was in decent shape and it still had some artifacts from its racing days, including some of the suspension pieces like the ladder bars for the rear end. Those are the original ones that Bogan built back in the 60s. So they retained those pieces, but they sent them off and had them chrome plated. They really went all out to make this thing top notch when it comes to build quality. And you'll see underneath, inside, outside, every piece of this car has that same level of detail but what really got me is this true candy apple paint. It is absolutely flawless and it's put over a gold base so it has this extremely deep color 
and it really dances out in the sun as you might be able to see in some of these video clips. And let's talk about the wheels because that's another piece of this car that really jumps out and grabs your attention. That gold hue is actually a custom coating that's on a set of real Rodders wheels. These wheels and tires really suit this car. Now, a controversial part of this car is the engine. And I say controversial because historically this car had an old engine in it and it now has a brand new 5.4 liter GT500 crate engine. Now, this you could say is an evolution, obviously, of Ford horsepower. The original car had a camera in it. This car has a dual overhead cam in it. This car also has a supercharger. This car effortlessly makes horsepower, whereas the old car, you know, they had to really work for the horsepower they got back then. No matter how you feel about it, this car is absolutely top notch front to back. This car is paying tribute to Bogan's racing days and all of that history that's wrapped up in those three Willis cars that he had had back in the 60s. So this car gets attention wherever it goes, indoor shows, outdoor shows, anywhere this thing goes, people flock to it and they want to know more about it. So I'm really glad that they put these signboards together to show the history of this car and the progression of this car and to show some of the build pictures and some of those details that you might not notice if you're just looking at it from the outside. So this thing is absolutely killer. It is one of the finest Willis Coupes on the planet, and I hope you enjoyed digging into the history of it, finding out a little bit more of how this car got its start in the drag racing days and where it ended up today.